We are developing, we're very close to the release of our white paper where we looked at the information that's available and that's already out there in relation to the number of inquests that have been held both in the UK and in Ireland. And we wanted to review the data that was coming through on those and see was there any comparabilities within them and also if there were comparabilities within what themes were they falling. Because in relation to HCI and the business that we provide and the services we provide, we obviously want to fulfill a need and a gap. Um, and to do that, we need to understand what those gaps are and we need to understand what those problems are. So, just briefly going on to this, um, uh, Ms. Staff has gotten a, a, a lot of review already today, but um, in relation to the findings, we, when we went through these, you'll see these, the, the headings coming through in, in, in a number of off cases. Obviously, governance comes through across the board, both in the UK um, and in Ireland. In, in the mid-staff situation, there was this incredible drive for foundation status. And one of the key failings that was identified was that singular financial focus um, to, to achieve foundation status. Now, in some ways, the, the regulatory was a little bit shielded, and I know that Alex talked about that this morning. Um, they seemed to accept um, a lot of the controls being in place from a financial perspective, but um, there, was, there wasn't sufficient oversight in relation to the care that was being provided. Leadership is something that obviously Pat brought up. Um, there was a clear lack of governance and, and leadership uh, provided, and not just from the board, but leadership throughout the organisation. As Pat says, we are all leaders and everybody within the healthcare sector has to take their role. And that culture that we saw uh, and that came through in that report was that it was somebody else's problem. I'm under a lot of pressure, I can't take this responsibility on. And there was focus on care of the staff rather than on, on, on care of the patients. Um, the, 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 as I said, the, the, the lack of compassion and fear, and I know Trina spoke about compassion being a key factor. And something that uh, Eilish has, has mentioned before about the stories and the data, and that no data without stories. And when we read these, um, uh, these, these reports, those stories become incredibly real. And it's all right looking at, at, at graphs in relation to graphs like this, but it really does bring home those real stories and the real lack of compassion and the pain and suffering that was caused by these innate structure failings. And you know, we, we always go back to that within HCI is in what was the failings from, from the structural perspective and the process that were in there. Risk comes through time and time again, both being ineffective in relation to the risk registers and a constant uh, state of flux within the organisations and the lack of recognition of the risks that were associated. Linked with that is in relation to complaints and incidents where they had this information that was coming through in incident and complaints and, and whistleblowing but that they weren't actively been taken on board and we weren't gleaning the information uh, that was coming through in relation to them. There was generally a lack of board awareness. The board were particularly interested or singularly interested in relation to the financial situation and status of, of, the, of the hospitals and not so much so on the, the person-focused centred care that was being provided. Clinical audit, lack of protocols and basic care the four-hour rule being one of the key indicators where um, the, the receptionists were actually doing the reviewing of, of people coming into ED um, and the uh, clinical staff were being taken away from serious cases and being put on more minor cases so that they could clear the, 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 the people coming in within a four-hour rule. So it was all about making the monetary or making the, making the cost in relation to, to, to timelines but not actually providing person-centred care. Another one we, we looked at, and there was a number of, uh, across the board in, in the white paper, was the Morgan Bay Trust. And again, uh, most of you would, would be aware of this. Uh, Bill Kirkup was the primary report that was researched, but it, it, that was just the end of a very long, uh, laborious process in, in, the, in relation to the investigation, uh, triggered primarily by the death of Joshua Titcombe. Um, and again, when we looked at the findings, again, governance, culture, complaints, incident management, and person-centred care. So our key failings were falling underneath this. In relation to the culture, the, the, the denial uh, and the acceptance of the importance um, of, of the regulatory requirements that were in, in place. 
there was a culture of cover-ups um, and again the staff protection of each other. They followed a path of natural childbirth at all costs uh, and unfortunately to the detriment, detriment of the care that was being provided. And when uh, there was identified failings, there was a culture of cover-up, records went missing um, and she was protect ourselves at all costs. Again, issuing escalation to the board, so communication was very much from the top down only, where there was no information coming from the provision of care, coming back up to the board and being uh, communicated, discussed, and uh, actions being taken in relation to them. So, the common themes, as I said, governance, culture, person-centred care, incident complaint, risk management and audit, uh, all of the, the themes that were, were discussed already today. In relation to the Irish inquiries, most of you will be, um, be okay with most of the Scali report, particularly in relation to the services screening programme, the Tala report in 2010 in relation to the unprocessed x-rays and GP, GP referral letters. We also looked at the Tala report 2012, which related to the clinical risk for um, patients being cared for um, in, uh, in corridors. The Savita Halbanagra case, uh, the Port Leash report, both 14 and 15, and a lot of focus in relation to 2015, where we looked at the, the, the quality and safety of the clinical services. So, all of these reports come in with a huge amount of not only information in relation to the tragedies that occurred, but also the core recommendations that were coming through on the reports. So, again, can we look at the comparables with the UK and with, the, with Ireland? Absolutely. From a governance perspective, the Scali report again looked at the financial issues um, in relation to cervical check. The, the bank guarantee came in very quickly after the launch of, of the service um, and they really struggled to uh, ensure that the right people were in place, that they had sufficient uh, people in place and also a big a lack of clarity in relation to roles. Shortage of job descriptions and certainly the roles and responsibilities not clearly defined within them. Um, the Teller Report in 2010, again, systems, systemic weaknesses, both from the management and the board, and, and providing that um, strategic direction and, and supervision of it, uh, a lack of strategic planning and, and goals and objectives that were being set. Port Leash, again, major deficiencies in corporate and clinical governments, uh, accountability and performance management. And I know from our own experience going out uh, into facilities and reviewing uh, HICWA and HSC reports, Certainly, if, if they can get the, if the warm fuzzy feeling is there through governance, there's a general confidence built within, uh, in, in reviews that if governance is correct, then, then the rest will follow through. In relation to culture, perception of patient culture was varied. Um, and that was interesting in the Port Leach report, where they did the culture, uh, patient safety culture review, and the doctors felt that there was a very good uh, culture of patient safety, and yet the nursing uh, and, and frontline staff the additional frontline staff found that it was extremely poor. So there was a real mismatch at where they felt patient culture lay. And um, the Tala report again, lacking in culture safety, and, and they felt that patients being treated in corridors was acceptable. And I suppose we've seen that again is that when it, is, it becomes day to day events, it becomes the acceptable manner of care that's being provided. And again, the Scala report, a major cultural shift in relation to open disclosure, a, a huge body of information provided in relation to open disclosure. Um, and, and the inconsistencies in the application of that uh, within uh, a number of organisations. With the Savita, the lack of provision of basic fundamental care within the personal centre of care, we saw that both within the <coughs> NHS inquiries also, that there was a failure to recognise risks of clinical deterioration and a failure to escalate these concerns. And again, uh, as Trina said, it, in, in many cases, uh, you know, that, that fear to speak up uh, when, when it's been identified that, that, that there's issues in the care being provided. In Port Leash, um, poor outcomes that likely could have been prevented if not adequately or satisfactorily act, acted upon, and families treated in an appalling manner with limited respect, kindness, courtesy, and consideration. And again, in the Morgan Bay, that was reflected where the parents of, of baby Joshua um, went. Uh, went to the nurses and you know, they said they felt that the baby needed antibiotics, that he was in distress and, and again on a number of occasions they were told the baby is fine and they never got to see a doctor. So th those, those concerns were never escalated within the person centred care. Risk management again throughout 
all of the reports, so the issues in relation to insufficient, uh, insufficient risk management, weaknesses in the controls, gaps in executive oversight, poorly de uh, uh, developed, and in many cases, the information that was coming through from incident reporting was never coming through into the risk management. So problems that had already happened were not going back in to the risk registers and being effectively addressed. Um, incidents, audits and complaints, again, uh, we saw that, that in many cases the incident reporting is very proactive, or re reactive should I say, rather than being proactive, uh, and there was no trending of the data, and this is where we talk about primarily with, in, in the learning, and, and John spoke earlier I think in relation to hospitals being awash with data, but there was never any learning taking from the trends that were coming through in the incident and complaint management. Uh, limited executive oversight of complaints, um, and again, uh, in, in relation to audits, were limited in their governance, design and effectiveness, which became a box-ticking exercise and really brought no actual value to the process as they lay. So again, those common themes we saw coming through, governance, culture, person-centred care, incident management, uh, risk management and audit and monitoring. So there certainly was a number of trends coming through that and certainly trends reflected in that within the recommendations. Um, so then we had to ask ourselves, well, with all of this information, with all of these recommendations that are coming through, why do they keep happening over and over again? And why do we not have effective action in applying the recommendations that come through on those?